Hey guys, Toolman Tim here. Welcome back to the workshop where we build business, create community, find freedom, and share success. Today's video is episode number 31 of the workshop podcast. So welcome back. And you might ask, Tim, what in the hell are you doing hanging around down in your basement? Well, let me ask you a question. For someone who's a self-professed prepper and also a handyman, can anyone notice what might be wrong with this electrical panel? It's not a trick question, I'm going to tell you. My lazy butt has yet to label it. We've lived here two years, the electrical was done just before we moved in, and I have not labeled it yet. So I figured the best way to make sure I got this done was to make a video about it. So I'm going to share with you some of the stuff that I've learned in my process, a template that I've built or made on a spreadsheet, a tool that I'm going to use that should speed up the process, and we'll talk about why it's important for preparedness and home safety to have a properly labeled electrical panel. All right, guys, real quick, if you want to know more about who I am, run by toolmantim.co. That's toolmantim.co. You find the shop over there that have way over 100 products that I've used in my handyman business that have made me money or saved me money. Anything you pick up through the Amazon links there will help support the content I create. And as well, if you want to follow this podcast, the workshop podcast, through audio only, if you have, uh, you know, if you, if you enjoy consuming your media through your headphones a little bit more, then you can pick it up in any podcatcher you use, or again, find the links over on the website. So to me, you know, working around the home is of utmost importance. Anybody who owns a home or even lives in a home should know a little bit about the systems that run it, that are the backbone of it. And when I first started working at a hardware store a lot of years ago, and I knew nothing about anything the guy that trained me he said you know if you give someone bad plumbing advice the worst you're going to end up with is wet feet but if you give somebody bad electrical advice the worst they're going to end up is dead so to me anytime you can make electrical work a little bit safer a little bit more common sense a little bit more uh simple you're you're helping yourself you're setting yourself up for success and allowing yourself to be able to work safely around something that can literally kill you in an instant. First off, you guys ever gone, well, at least me, as a handyman again, I'll go into a house sometimes and I'll need to turn off the power. And you'll go in, and <laughs> you'll flip it open, and well, this is a blank slate. Sometimes a blank slate's better, but you'll find somebody that, you know what, it's been labeled and relabeled and relabeled. There'll be some stuff in a, you know, a purple Crayola washable marker that somebody used once. Half it'll be labeled in pencil that's gone so faded you can't even tell. Then the stuff that's in pen is in cursive and you can't understand it. And then it doesn't line up with the numbers that are uh, attached to the panel. So number one, if you're going to do this, either print it out on computer paper or use a Sharpie or use a dark, dark ink. And then laminate everything when you're done, if you can. But absolutely, you want to make this as simple as you possibly can. You want to make it as simple for you, for anyone in your family that's going to be doing this, or for anybody who might end up purchasing your home down the road all of those things. So why exactly do we want to label our electrical panel? And I know some of this should be simple, some of it maybe not so much. So first off, and this is probably the one that I thought of when I was putting the, the script together for this video, and okay, if you have a tripped breaker upstairs, something goes so you know, okay, I don't have any power at this plug. So you come downstairs, and one thing that I have noticed, and it seems to be getting worse, and I don't know if it's just because I'm an old man or what, but when a breaker trips, a lot of times you can barely tell. I've got a rental I look after across the street, and the breakers there, when they trip, you can't even tell they're tripped. So if they weren't labeled, you got to do the old and flick and flick and flick and flick until you figure out which one it is. Now, if you're upstairs and say the uh, outlet in the kitchen went dead, and you come downstairs and you, you can go down. Okay, there it is. That's the outlet. Flick it off. Turn it back on. Save you a ton of guessing games. And, you know, you could accidentally lose a script you're working on or, I don't know, reset the uh, dryer or, you know, heaven help you, accidentally cancel your uh, coffee schedule and your coffee maker, any of that stuff. So, number one, that just makes it easier. Number two, it's going to save you time when you need to turn off the power. Again, say... I need to change out a plug upstairs or say there's one that uh, I had one in Charlotte's room actually that started uh, getting a little bit blacker. Uh, it uh, shorted out 
and I needed to know how to do it. Well, then, of course, I had to come downstairs and try to guess. So I flicked and flicked and flicked until she hollered. Again, time is of the essence. And when you're putting this together, you know, if you can save yourself a little bit of time by coming straight down here and figuring it out, all the better. So in an emergency, any time, <laughs> anything that you have to think about can, make, can, can be one more variable that can cause you trouble. So if you know, hey, I've got a little fire, well, first put the fire out, but if you know you've got a trouble spot, you've got a, a plug up there, break in or arc in or something like that, and you need to come downstairs, the best thing is to be able to come down here and go, zoop, that's the one, and turn it off. You know, if you have to think about it or frig with it, there's a good chance you might panic, and those few seconds might cost you some money, a fire, anything else. So if you can save yourself a little bit of time in an emergency and take out one more step, then you have a, a much better chance of success in being safe. So if you are powering your house with a generator and using the back feeding method and you have a, a lockout switch or, you know, so your, your main has to be off, but then you're in, in order to turn on your back feed inlet, your main breaker has to be off. So if that's the case, great. However, when you are, again, if you have an unlabeled panel, and you know you've only got, say, 3,000 watts worth of power, well, it would be really nice to know which one of these breakers you want to turn on instead of guessing, accidentally turning the wrong thing off, and then overloading and tripping the breaker on your generator. So having a well-managed, well-labeled electrical panel can end up saving you time and safety when powering your house in a power emergency with a backup generator. Two more quick ones as far as having an uh, you know, electrical panel labeled. Number one, in some places, it's even code now. Uh, is anybody going to come and check on it? Absolutely not. However, if you ever need to pull an electrical permit, there may be such a, an instance where they come and inspect it and say, hey, you're not going to get your permit until it's labeled. And then the other one, and who doesn't love money, it may save you a bit of time and money in this instance. Say you have an electrician over and they need to do some work and they need to isolate a certain circuit. Well, it may take them 5, 10, who knows? It could take them a little while to isolate what that circuit is. And all that time that they're on your property, they're billing you by. So if you have it labeled and he says, okay, there's the wall. I know which one it is. You can go over and turn it off. It may just end up saving you some money as well. So those are some tips, some reasons why, you know, preppers and handymen and people who are into emergency preparedness would really maybe want to have their panel labeled. So now let's get into the nuts and bolts of actually labeling this panel. So there's a few things. The first thing I ended up doing, because I couldn't find one on the internet, and I'll put the PDF link uh, in the description, but I made a quick little template here. So I have 30 circuits. Uh, some are uh, 220, so they, they're a double pull. So two numbers are gonna take up one circuit. How that, although also, I also have these uh, split minis. So right here, there's a double 15, so that one number is gonna have two circuits on it. And then this one right here is a, I don't even know exactly what it's called, but it, it's a double pole, but it has two mini 15s on the outside and a 40 on the inside. So a, du a double 40 on the inside, which is kind of neat. So we're going to work our way around. Before we dig into using this guy, and I'm going to show you this, you'll get a full review on this on a tool time down the road. But this is the Klein Tools, uh, which I love Klein Tools electrical gear. This one is the Digital Circuit Breaker Finder. So I started doing some research on how in the hell I'm going to easily label my circuit panel. And this type of tool was the one that everybody recommended. Now, there's a few other ways to do it. We'll talk about them first before we get into this. So if you want to do it the old-fashioned DIY way that doesn't cost you anything, there's a few different ways to do it. First, turn off every individual circuit in your house. Then turn on one breaker. Go upstairs, walk around till you find where the power's turned on. Notate that. Go back to the basement, do it again. Next breaker, same thing. So that's the first way. Turn all your breakers off, turn one on at a time, and then go look for it. Another way, turn all your breakers on and turn one breaker off. And then go upstairs and try to find where the power's off. That's the next one. A third one is go upstairs, plug a radio into the plug that you want to check. Start flicking switches until you hear the radio turn off. That's another way to do it. All of those take time. <laughs> All of this takes time. However, there's a lot of guesswork involved in those ways. Now, there's another way that I do not recommend. However, if you want to look into it, find a way to, to make a, uh, a, a circuit tripper. Anyway, just look that up. I'm not going to give you any more information on that. But there are some things that electricians have that they'll plug into the wall and it'll actually pop the breaker. I don't like that. 
If an electrician uses it, great. That's not something I'm going to use. This one here, you plug this into the outlet, this end, and then you come down here and you point this wand at each of the circuits, each of the breakers, until it beeps. And then you know that's the one. I'm still going to have to make trips up and down, but it's going to take a fair bit of the guesswork out of it. So I made that template, and as I find one, I'm going to notate it in here. And when I'm done, I'm going to take my wife's label maker, and we're going to label each number here. And then we're going to make a corresponding uh, legend or chart with all the printed out here. I'm going to laminate it, and then we're going to stick it right there. So that's how we're going to end up. So for you, for those of you who are on the, uh, the audio podcast, use your imagination a little bit, but simple as labeling each individual um, breaker with the label maker, then printing this off and putting it on the inside of the breaker panel door. Got my handy dandy neck knife. Love this thing from MT Knives, Patrick Gorman. Does incredible work. Awesome, awesome stuff there, man. All right, here we go. So let's bring these two guys in just like that. We'll show you those just like that. Comes with yet another useless 9 volt battery. They're not really useless, but honestly, I really didn't want any more 9 volt battery gadgets. And then I started buying a whole bunch of 9 volt battery gadgets. So we're stuck with it, but that's okay. okay so we're going to show you how to test this. Uh, so we're going to take this, we're going to plug it into the outlet. It's going to light up. That has other functions as well, but we're just using it to send a signal for right now. So then you're going to turn it on here. It's going to beep. And if you have a hard time getting a really good solid signal, by pushing it a second time, it seems to center in a little bit better. So you start here. I thought on the handle at first, don't know why, but if you put it down on the base of the breaker, you get a better signal. So we're going to work our way up. Green means that it's not uh, detecting the signal. And when you start getting closer, it may start blinking a little or beeping a little faster. Like that. Here, listen. And there it is. Right there. So that's a split breaker. A little harder to catch, but that's it right there. When it goes solid red, you know you have your signal. So I hope that helps. Uh, it's a fun little tool to work with. It saved me quite a bit of time tracking down all these different circuits. So I have realized this takes more trips than you would think going up and down the stairs and a few times, uh, especially when you need to deal with lights that don't have a plug on the circuit, at least that you can find, it still requires some trial and error flipping off the breakers. Not the worst thing in the world. My daughters will be home soon. I'm going to get them to help me with the third floor. But until then, we're going to keep so, plugging away. Number one, you'll notice I have the cover off the electrical panel. Just about done. I've got everything uh, mapped out and sorted out. I wanted to share with you guys a few uh, tips and tricks I figured out as I went along. And some real headaches that I never thought of while everything's still fresh in my mind. So that, uh, you know, when I go to finish up this video, I don't forget it all and don't share the best stuff with you. So, first off, this was the blank template that I used right here. And I just kind of hen scratched everything in as I went along. That was super helpful. However... One thing, I'll show you this right here. This will be the cover. So inside there, um, I needed numbers. Otherwise, I was constantly counting the breakers up and down. So what I did was I used dry erase marker. So just marked them in temporarily. I'm gonna, you'll see we're going to do some permanent labeling here in a minute. But I needed some way to recognize what breaker number it was so that I could then input it into my, ooh, sorry guys, into my spreadsheet. So that was pretty handy. Now, here is the finished product. Took it over to the wife's office this morning, laminated it. We're going to cut it out, mount it to the inside of the uh, breaker uh, door. Here is our labeler. We're going to use a labeler to label each individual number. So we have a permanent thing there like that. Now, what other ins and outs did I learn? Well, number one, this thing is awesome. It's great for plugs doesn't work great for lights. So a little adapter I would think about buying would be uh, one of those screw-in sockets that you can put into your light socket that will turn it into an outlet. Problem with that is most of them are only two prongs. So then you need to get a two prong to three prong adapter. I actually seen those listed as a recommended product on Amazon when I was buying these. I thought that seems like a really weird combination. Now I know. So now what other tips? Uh, number one, eliminate the obvious breakers before you start so you're going to know you know your 220 uh, items in your house your dryer your stove 
my instance, the hot tub and the uh, central air. So that was eight breakers or four double pole breakers that I was able to eliminate right off the bat. So that helps knock out some more. Then something I didn't realize until afterwards, well, a couple things, but so I have a lot of these uh, split mini split breakers and in, they have a, a double pole in the middle, like a double 40, and then they have a 15 on either side. So I was testing them and I got everything listed in the house and I'm like, I still have breakers here. What's going on? except for one I couldn't figure out. So I took the panel cover off and lo and behold, most of those 15s are unused breakers. So I saved myself some time once I realized, hey, there's no wires running into that breaker. So that means it's not used. Now, when it was all said and done, I still had a single breaker. It was number six. I could not figure out where it went. So I thought, well, what are we gonna do? That's why the cover come off. So one thing you can do is count down. You got number six. Look there, of course, turn your power off, or at least to that breaker. Don't touch anything, just use a flashlight to trace the wire back, and then you'll find this is the one where it comes out. This is one of those really old cloth covered wires. So then if you have exposed basement like this, you can get an idea at least of where it's heading. So I followed it up, traced it all the way across. Turns out that entire circuit runs one single plug next to my lazy boy up in the living room. So that's a way to find it if you're not sure. Now, as far as the lights go, I ended up FaceTiming with my daughters, sent them to the third floor, and when we figured out what breaker controlled it, we'd flip it on, flip it off, and see if it controlled the lights as well. We did that for each room. That was the easiest way. I was hoping to be able to do this without turning any power off. Didn't exactly work. Now, this one you're going to say, Tim, you're an idiot. Remember, I grew up on the East Coast where I had no natural gas exposure that's probably a good thing. Anyway, except to my father, who's the world's largest source of natural gas and has the keychain to prove it. Now, that being said, I'd never worked with natural gas before. So everything I know about it, I've learned in my eight years I've lived out here. You know, I've changed parts on, uh, elect on uh, natural gas water heaters, furnaces, that kind of stuff. Something that I realized today for the first time, <laughs> there's no power. There's no hardwired power running to my natural gas water heater, which means I have power when the power's out. It, I, I'm sure I'm going to do some more research and explain it, but I just need to let you know there's literally no breaker or no household power controlling it. So it's either a battery inside. I know some of it, the thermal couple is controlled strictly by the heat once it's lit. I know the, the pilot is on all the time, but there is a little bit of power there simply because I got a little blue LED light that blinks. So call me a dummy, call me what you want. I'm sure there's someone else out there who knows or just found out because I did that also their standing pilot natural gas hot, um, hot water heater actually should just be a water heater, shouldn't it? You're not heating hot water, but anyway, uh, does not require household power. So now I've discovered that <laughs> we have uh, electrical or uh, backup hot water even when the electricity's off. That was pretty exciting. All right. So now we're going to put this lid back on the panel. We're going to start putting on the labels. You guys can watch me do it as we go. So my wife says, honey, when you're taking the labeler, are you going to need an extra cartridge of uh, printable labels? No, I'm only printing 30 numbers. There should be no way. You guys notice I'm at 17 and I am out of labels. So I got to run down to the office, get some more. But in the meantime, we'll at least show you what we're doing with this. So we're going to I also... Uh, Took advantage of my wife's uh, office at the daycare and laminated this thing right here. Now, I don't have any packing tape, so we are going to try our hands at my favorite uh, 3M Velcro strips. The uh, little sticky pads, I love those things. We're going to give them a go and we're going to see how well they work. They should hold up really well to the plastic. That's these guys right here, these command strips. And honestly, they're big enough that two of these should work. So, let's, you just, my little trick, stick the Velcro together, well, nice and straight like this, push them in, so now you've got one pack together, we'll grab another one here, once again, take them, match them up, there's no male or female with these Velcro strips, okay, then you take one side off and stick it to the back 
whatever you want to stick to a wall or something else. Do the same with this. Then another. Take it off. These are simple, but I found I had to learn a few tricks while I was doing it. Now they're stuck to the back. Now you peel that side off. So now you have one more side. It's like making a grilled cheese sandwich and uh, never getting butter on your fingers. Okay, so we're going to stick that right, right there. Okay, looks good to me. And that is that. It's not coming off there at all. The only way I can remove it is the Velcro. Uh, so I'm happy with that. We can handle that perfect. So I'll go get some more labels and I'll show you my finished product. Okay, so I wanted to give you a nice zoom in of the finished product. So here that is. This is the legend or the key or the grid, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, if anybody needs to come down, there it is. I left the empty slots empty. I originally had the word empty in there and then I got thinking that's dumb because if you ever want to fill those in, I mean I could use a sharpie at that point. So instead of having to white it out and then write it in, I just left it that way. Now, I was going to put emergency shutdown or main, I wasn't sure what to put there. I went with main shutoff. So that should be obvious enough for anybody. Hey, shit hits the fan, turn that off right now. So then here are the numbers. And you're going to notice something funny. 17, wait, look, they're all uh, translucent from there on out. I went over to my wife's office and she didn't have any more white labels. So I want to finish up with a few closing thoughts. I guess the first thing is uh, preparedness can be rather boring, can it? It's not all sexy and buying, you know, life straws and body armor and, <laughs> you know, a pallet load of mountain house shelf stable 50 year foods, that kind of stuff like that. That stuff's fun. But one of my favorite sayings is preparedness is prevention. And this right here is prevention. It took me maybe three hours from start to finish. And now I have something that I've been bitching to myself about for a long time. A fully labeled electrical panel, which will save me time in the future, but could also save somebody from a real personal disaster. Also going to make it easier to test the generator, which is exciting as well. But like I said, preparedness is prevention, and it's not very sexy, is it? It's one of those things, you just have to make time and get these projects done. I love doing them. I love sharing them with you. So another thing I got thinking is, you know, the average person in their lifetime might label one or two electrical panels. And I got thinking about the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge is knowing about a topic. Wisdom is screwing up a bunch of times in learning what to do properly. The problem with a project like labeling an electrical panel is simply you might do it once and not have to do it again for 20 years and who's going to remember what you need to do in 20 years or you might do it twice that's it and then you forget so what little bit of wisdom you had you don't remember so i like doing these i like showing you the guy the when i screw up when i hit my thumb or when i put labels on upside down or i accidentally leave the breaker off to the hot tub and have to reheat it, you know all that kind of stuff and then I realize my frustrations while I'm doing this project and then I want to share with you guys you know the tips and tricks so that I can hopefully impart some of my wisdom you know people throw around that term expert all the time and I hate it because an expert is just somebody who's learned more than you've learned necessarily and it's all based on the back of mistakes and accidents and life experience so this kind of stuff it's a project anyone can tackle i wanted to break it down into step-by-step -step processes on how to make it simple what i've learned where i screwed up and what i would have improved if i did it again because you know it's going to be staying that way for a long time so guys i hope talking about this got you interested if there's other systems in the home you want to see in-depth videos like this let me know uh, Stay tuned, we're going to have an in-depth review of the Klein Tool Circuit Tracer down the road, but I wanted to use it a bunch before just so I can actually give it a positive or negative recommendation. So far, I really like it, but that's not for, uh, that's for another time anyway. So guys, you know, I always appreciate it. You could spend time anywhere doing anything, and I love the fact that you'll hang out with me here in the workshop, whether it's on YouTube and video or through the podcast feed where you're listening to me uh, getting shit done with your earbuds in your ears. So thanks a lot, guys. And if you're new, hit the subscribe button, follow the podcast, and as always, stay happy, stay healthy, and have a great week.
week.